Everybody, welcome back to Better Pro. I am off war, joined again by Reed Fregel, former Ohio State NFL tackle. And the Buckeyes, you know, obviously, uh, you win championships up front in the trenches. And Reed, uh, Friday, Friday master class in that from those Buckeyes up front. Yeah, I think it was, if there was ever a game for everything to come together, it was um, in that game, of course. So. Uh, to see the O-line step up on a big stage like that, not saying that there was ever any doubt, uh, but just to see them continue the dominance that they've showed all, all season um, and kind of go against um, all the doubters and, and all the stuff that we've heard in the weeks leading up to it. Um, I don't know if anybody could have hyped them up any more leading up to that game. I think there was enough bulletin board material out there as we talked about um, at Roosters, but um, it was just great to see it all come together. Um, and I'm excited to dive in a couple of these plays here. Um, Sermon obviously going for close to 200 yards again. I mean, the guy is an absolute beast. So uh, great time to be talking about offensive line and, and running backs. <laughs> so, and we did that a couple of weeks ago after the Michigan State game where three new starters were out, or three starters were out, three new guys had to go in. Yeah. Matt Jones was one of them. That turned out to be pretty significant because Harry Miller was on the unavailability report uh, right before kickoff there uh, against Clemson. He goes in, and I thought, you know, you can, you know this better than me, Reed, but I thought Matthew Jones was uh, very, very solid at left guard. Yeah, and that's immediately what I said when I saw that there were some COVID inactives going in the game. I just thought back to that Michigan State game, like you said, and every doubt I had in my mind just immediately went away because they already proven that they can play with their backups and win a, a, um, a football game against a solid defense. So. After seeing him at Michigan State, all my worries went away about Harry Miller. Obviously, it would have been great to have him out there, but um, beating a, a defense like Michigan State, in, in my mind, losing Harry Miller, just one key piece to the offensive line, um, against a Clemson defense that had some guys out as well, I wasn't worried at all, and obviously it, it worked out pretty well. And, you know, this Clemson defense was one of the best in the country at, at generating pressure, getting sacks. Uh, they barely touched Justin Fields in this game from that from that perspective. Yeah. And Thayer Munford and Nicholas Petit Ferrer, I mean, they just keep coming out of these games and it's like zero pressures. Like I don't even remember the last time that they were, were hit for a sack uh, that they were blamed for. I mean, the, the pass protection, run blocking, both everything seems to be uh, rolling right now for the Buckeyes. Yeah, you, you got two sacks on the day is what I, I got. And I'm not sure, like you said, how much of those were on the offensive line. Um, but Justin Fields is obviously able to have one of his career games, six TDs, tying a record. Um, but, I mean, I talked to somebody about this um, last week. I think this is one of the best offensive lines we've had at Ohio State in quite some time. And you and I have talked about that throughout the past year. And to see these guys kind of peaking right now, I mean, we're witnessing one of the best uh, units in Ohio State history. Yeah, that last one that you were a part of in 2012 and really all the way through that title in 14. It seemed like it was always one injury away. Ohio State's gone through games, yeah. missed four guys at a time, and it's just been remarkable. Uh, yep. You know, they've come a long way since then. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if you put us in that Michigan State game. We go up to East Lansing my, my senior year, and we have to put the twos out there. I'm not so sure we performed at the same level that, that they did up there in East Lansing. So they're, they're incredible. All right, Greg Studrawa has it going. We're going to take a closer look at what was working uh, on one particular drive against Clemson in that dominant performance in the Sugar Bowl right now. Reed will break it down. Let's roll the tape. All right, Reed. I mean, this is a this is about as important of a drive as you're going to find. Tied 14-14. Buckeyes are looking to get it going and take that lead. And, you know, started with some quick hitters where there's not maybe too much to do, um, but certainly you have to keep holding up up front just to get things going. Yeah, it's the sound protection up front here. Uh, it's a quick throw, so guys know they can be a little bit aggressive. You see a little bit of lean in the offensive line there. They're attacking aggressively, selling the play action, and you get the quick hit out to the outside there with space. I mean, that's 10 yards all day. Yeah, you take that and you move the chains. and You know, you just look at this group. We talked about it off the top. It, they're really firing off the ball, and you see Wyatt Davis and, and Matthew Jones. There's more that we'll get into as this goes on, but just yeah. aggression. I mean, physicality. Yeah, I mean, look at Wyatt Davis there playing up to the second level. He's, he's really digging into that nose tackle, though, too, at the same time without really fully looking at that linebacker coming over and he's able to get at the second level just playing aggressive and stuff like that I mean that that's one-on-one stuff for them but um, I love seeing that stuff on a, on a weekly basis from these guys and uh, they're laying it all out there every single snap uh, they're just playing as a, as a unit cohesive as hell 
This looked like we spent a lot of time after that Michigan State game, you know, breaking down that it wasn't just those five guys, also the tight ends. I think this almost looks like the exact same run that Sermon broke in that game where yeah. it seems like it's all designed to go back in that cutback lane. Yeah, exactly. I think I think from the start this is designed to cut back like we talked about before. Uh, but you're seeing an excellent block here by Ruckert. I mean, uh, I think it's Ruckert there in the end. Yeah, we'll get there. Yeah, but uh, – I mean, I think the tight ends as a whole, they're having probably the best season as a group that the tight ends have seen in a while at Ohio State. Um, and obviously the two touchdowns from Rucker, but uh, look at that edge seal right there. I mean, you cannot ask for a better hole. Or I mean, I don't know if you call that a hole. That's a that's <laughs> that's an entire half of a field right there he has to work with. Um, and the offensive line's doing a great job doing their part, but that tight end right there is the key block on that backside, uh, yeah, which ends up being the front side of the run. Looks like it's Farrell in this case, but we've yeah. seen Rucker make the same block, and both of those guys, uh, they've come so far. I, I know that that's a big deal for you as well, having having been at both positions. You, And if you're going to play at Ohio State, it doesn't even matter where you are. You're going to have to be able to block. Yeah, I, I still – you know, I, I, I love where the tight ends have, have grown to catching touchdown passes at Ohio State, but you still got to be able to block like this on a, on a weekly basis, and the tight ends have shown that they're able to do both at Ohio State. So love the, love the job the tight ends are doing lately. Yeah, they, uh, they will feature in a little bit more later in this drive to get things going from in the passing game. But this was, you know, I thought this was a good mixture. It was such an important drive, and Ohio State really balanced it well. Uh, and if you're going to be able to do both, again, it just comes down up front. I can't say it enough how important it is. Yeah, yeah look at that pocket. I mean, he has so much space and so much time. I mean, he's, he can easily step up. Let's say Thayer gives up a little bit of edge pressure here. I mean, he's so damn deep that could happen, but Thayer's athletic enough to even ride him by even that deep. I mean, he's three kicks deep, and he's, he's turning him. Justin could easily step up, either take this and run or deliver a shot like this. And obviously, um, this, this pass was a little bit off, but um, anytime you give Justin that much time, he's going to be able to take shots like that, and I think that's going to be exciting to see versus Bama. It was almost surprising to see Justin miss that one with the way that that night went. So – also not always going to be perfect. Looks like a little bit of – Ohio State was trying to go so fast uh, yeah. and keep Clemson off balance, maybe a little bit too fast. They were they're just doing new things and seemed like a little bit of a communication breakdown here, but they still turned it into a positive play. Yeah, and I was actually hoping to see some of this out of Ohio State going into this week. It's a little bit of a hurry up, um, keep the momentum going type plays. Uh, so that was good to see. But, yeah, like you said, you're throwing something in like that, a little, a little new wrinkle. Um, you're going to have plays like this that happen. Um, but – Justin being Justin is able to do with what he has and, and get a couple yards out of it. But, yeah, those will happen, I guess, when you do a change of pace. Yeah, he's, uh, he, he does help make up for the occasional mistake. And Yeah. This is another example, I think, of what you're talking about with Thayer Munford. I, he, I'm kind of surprised he hasn't gotten more national attention or, or award, even Big Ten awards for what he did this year because he is really – this has been the version that a year ago we were talking about, well, maybe he could have left early. Yeah, I mean, I love the fact that he came back, obviously, selfishly as a fan, but um, you're seeing him just be athletic as hell here on the edge. He knows he's got time and space. This was kind of an awkward um, feel as a left tackle. Whenever you got a guy way out in space and you know you have time, you see him drop his hands kind of out of his kick if you go to the beginning of it. So he knows he, he doesn't have to uh, deliver an initial blow. He's got to deal with a guy coming off the edge there. He's probably topped by the safety, so he knows he's coming. Um, so he has time. He's got to get back. So he's really kicking back with his hands low. But he's, most guys will screw that up and not be able to throw their hands at the right time. Thayer, being as athletic as he is, times it up perfectly. It runs him by and knows exactly where Justin is. Um, and, again, like you said, I'm surprised that this guy's not getting more national attention. Worked out. He made the right pick up there. Got allowed Justin Fields to move the chains again there to Jackson Smith and Jigba on the completion. Keep this drive going. And this is another one, too, that you know you and I were talked about talking about before we – you know, started filming, like, all right, how, how long does Matthew Jones have to hold up? Because the pocket is clean, the route develops, Justin Fields able to get the football off. Probably seems like it's a win, even if Matthew Jones doesn't hold it for three seconds. I don't know. Yeah, and if you go back to the beginning of it, I think you might maybe be expecting more of a hand from, from Thayer. I don't think that's the case. But, yeah, I think he's just got to get a little bit more of an inside presence there. You see Thayer give the right hand yeah. on that defensive end right there. So maybe it shoves him more inward. And Matt Jones is kind of playing on the left side a little bit too much. Knowing that center is not there on your inside, you kind of should be a little bit more positioned inside. But 
Um, again, he still is able to hold them long enough for Justin to deliver a, um, a shot like this. But, yeah, that's something you'd like to see cleaned up, I guess, going forward if you're going to get picky about things like that. Well, we know how uh, how picky Greg Sudrawa can be at times. Yes. That's why this, this unit has developed the way that it has. Yep, he's done a phenomenal job, and I'm sure he's already harped them on that. <laughs> All right, some of the play action here. and um, Again, this is – this finishes with Justin Fields just doing his thing, but uh, you can tell, you know, Wyatt Davis puts another guy in the ground. Uh, you've got a, the flow going against it, and, and really, you know, Clemson has no shot at seemingly, you know, stopping the way this play is designed. Yeah, these, these were some of my favorite pass protections whenever they were called is a sprint out or roll out because uh, you know the quarterback's going to fake out the defense, and you can really lay out there and lay into the guy almost like a run block um, and know that your quarterback's really not going to be at risk if you do uh, give up a little bit of pressure because he's going the opposite way. So love seeing Justin out there in space like this. Hopefully he doesn't take those kind of shots in the next game. But I'm not sure that we're going to see him running quite as much uh, against Alabama on Monday night. Uh, maybe it depends on what kind of medical treatment he gets for the week. But yeah. Example where they didn't really get it going, but it sets up this where Ohio State really has had been seemingly setting up something like this for several weeks. and, and and knew that they could get this against Clemson. What's the key to setting up the old tight end leak there, Reed? Yeah, I mean, you're, you're looking at the tight end, put up some good blocks throughout the game, and they're going to kind of be maybe looking at him less as a receiver, which I don't know how you do because he ends up getting two touchdowns. But um, <laughs> the tight end delay is probably my favorite play of the tight end because, uh, you know, as immediately when you start selling that run block as a tight end, that linebacker, whoever is on you, <clears throat> is going to look you off for the most part. So anytime I, I heard a tight end delay called, especially back in high school days, I loved it. Um, you could really sell it. And Rucker does a phenomenal job here, waiting, waiting, waiting. You know, he's, he probably has a count he's got to go by. Um, and he waits just long enough to see that backer flow over top to where he can peel out. Um, and that there's there waiting for his man. Gets him beat a little bit on the outside, and then there's running back help, obviously. Uh, but a play like this, you're going to have kind of little nuances like that. But look how wide open he is back there because he's faked out the defense so well by selling the, the run up front. Worked pretty well. The offensive line uh, set the pace there, set the tone, cleared the way as Ohio State took the lead there against Clemson, never looked back. A dominant performance. Can't do it without the offensive lineman. That's why Reed Fragle is here to break it down for us. Reed, appreciate your thoughts and your analysis, man. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Austin. Looking forward to it again. For Reed, I'm Austin Ward. Thanks for joining us for Letterman Road Buck IQ. We'll see you next time.